Okay, so we want to talk to the people that are maybe either living a lackluster faith life or living a lukewarm faith life. Or if you're in like a faith crisis. I love doing podcasts with you. I love you. doing podcasts with you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, she's weird. Reddit on, on Reddit. Reddit on Reddit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Happy and Healthy. I am your host, Janine Amapola, and I am joined today by my co-host, my husband, Caleb Ward. It's good to be back. It's been a while. It has been a while. It's you, been a minute. You haven't been on the podcast in a month. It's been longer than that. No, it's, it's been, been a month, I has think. Has it been a month? Yeah, because we took a three-week break. The last episode was solo, and now you're back on, so it's been a month. Wow. I welcome never, back. I never realized how much uh, I needed this. I need... The hour. He with, needs an hour. I need an hour with my wife to shoot the sheesh, <laughs> uh, to get into it because I feel like you know if you follow us on Instagram or you occasionally watch YouTube videos, you don't re- you get the highlight reel. Yeah. You don't get the. Uh, this is a sit down, one hour getting into yeah. it. You get to see a lot of our personality come out, mm-hmm. and I think the podcast is this. It's I think it's our favorite. We've talked about this before. Oh my gosh, it's I our love favorite it. channel. Absolutely love the podcast because. You're absolutely right. You might see, like we just posted today, um, like a week in our life, mini vlog, weekend in our life. You're seeing like these fast images, but you're not getting Mm -hmm. to hear. It's just like banter. You don't get to hear the arguments, you know? Well, they don't see the arguments. We have some actually. (laughs) That's what's funny about, I feel like, you know, I've people have come up to us and they've said, oh my gosh, you know, you guys seem so perfect in your relationship. Or like, I admire your relationship. Let me tell you guys. Marriage is hard and mm-hmm. it's fun. It's just as hard though. Not hard as in like, oh, I want to leave you. But it's like hard as in you have two people from way different backgrounds. Oh yeah, you're selfish. Merging lives. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this last month, I feel like when we took the break from social media. It was good for us to like come together, figure out mm-hmm. how we're going to start this foundation off right yep. and how we're going to build a healthy marriage. And, you know, here we are been so so good so if you guys don't know who we are we are caleb and janine now ward i think we're janine I'm and caleb still not over that i think, I think we're janine and caleb mm. this is janine and caleb it also sounds better well also they know me they've known me for 12 years i know but janine and but caleb from like a syllable perspective just sounds better than caleb and janine i agree janine and caleb yeah. so yeah we've been married two and a half months almost three on february 12th which is crazy crazy we're basically professionals we're we are so proficient in marriage uh we do want to do an episode on marriage and i think just the realities of newlyweds engagement season um because again you know with social media like you guys saw our engagement season if you were following me and it was so fun like love the season but also it was really hard at some times and so we want to give you guys some advice on that being a newlywed so uh we have been married for almost three months This podcast is called Happy and Healthy. So if you're new here, this is season five. I've been doing this since 2020. And I started this podcast when I was single as a Pringle living in California. Which flavor? Heartbroken. Probably salt and vinegar chip because I was bitter. Those are the worst ones too. That was a good joke, babe. Come on. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was funny. That was good. Thank you. I would I'd be I was bitter though a little. <laughs> what what I was fl- a bitter Betty. I'd be barbecue. Why? I don't know. You seem like you'd be a barbecue. A little tan in the summer. Oh my know. gosh, he gets so tan. The first time I saw him in the summertime when he was tan, I was like, mm. that was weird. <laughs> that was really weird. <laughs> We're not going to cut that because uh, it's kind of funny, but I saw you and I was like, wow. Let's uh, let's go in and get into it. Happy and Healthy is sponsored by BetterHelp. And so I'm excited to be partnering with them because I'm such a big proponent of counseling. So what are some things that you want to keep the same about yourself or your life in 2024? Where are you already crushing it? Think opposite of new year, new you. Maybe you are already happy with a certain part of your life, but maybe you want to change something. Maybe you are taking one step to tackle something in your home or in your life. We start taking supplements. But I also think that personally, mentally, we need to take care of ourselves. And that's where therapy comes in. 
Therapy helps you find strength so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really, really stick. I've done therapy in my own life many times with Caleb. I did it even before I met Caleb, and there's just been so many beneficial things I've learned from it, and I really think that it's going to better you as well, finding those weaknesses or finding areas that you are stuck. So talking to a therapist can really, really help you. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It is entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit betterhelp.com slash happy healthy today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash happy healthy. And in today's episode, we want to just kind of break down a little bit of advice regarding Christianity because the amount of DMs I get, so, so, okay, let me rewind really fast. I wrote a book and it's called Becoming Happy and Healthy. I talked about it in the last episode. It comes out March 26th. It's available for pre-order. I wrote this book because I basically sourced the most frequent questions I get in my DMs. And some of the questions I get are, what Bible do I get? How to read the Bible? How do I know where to start? How do I understand the Bible? How do I find friends? How do I hear the voice of God? How do I discern? Like so many questions around faith, which is so, so amazing. So we're going to give you some advice regarding those questions today, but to get more into it, you can definitely order my book, Becoming Happy and Healthy. This goes all into it to help you guys out. But let me say something real quick. So guys, I'm not a reader. I hate reading more than anything, but 2024... Um, my goal was to read six books a year for the year, which, you know, a lot of people go, I'm going to read 25 books. No, I'm going to read one book every two months. That would be more books I've read in the last five years. It's a small goal, but it's a, it's big for me. Mm -hmm. Um, what's cool about Janine's book and I, and I get it, I'm biased because she's my wife, but I was actually surprised to find out when you open the book, every page has like, you know, this one is five things to help you. Uh, make it real in your life. And it asks five questions. There's like a section in here on how to travel on a budget. So like it's supposed to help you spiritually, but it's also going to help you just practically in your life. You're going to be writing things down. and You won't even have to write things down. You could bookmark it and just go, oh, I can go to this page when I'm struggling with this. And so it's really cool. Thanks, babe. Yeah, that was the goal of my book was to make it very practical. So the back even says authentic, practical advice for the biggest struggles you face. And I wanted it to all be biblically based as well, but also things I've seen to work in my life. So you'll open it and there's literally challenges in here. Um, what, How to pack for your own solo adventure weekend, how to take yourself on a date challenge. You know what? Your second book you should write? What? You should write a book on how to date younger. <laughs> oh, you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> How to be a cougar in 2024. That was awesome. I just pushed that button. I that didn't even good. find it. Um, hold on. Okay, so that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> also, at the end of today's episode, I know we're still taking our sweet time. We are going to be continuing to do our new segment, Reddit on Reddit. So we basically source a crazy story or a situation from Reddit and we react to it. So we're going to continue mm-hmm. to do this at the end of every episode. And we have a good one for today. Okay, let's get into today's episode. Okay, so we want to talk to the people that are maybe either living a lackluster faith life or living a lukewarm faith life. Or if you're in like a faith crisis. Mm -hmm. Or even maybe you're the goody two-shoes who does everything right and don't have like a, you know what I mean? Yeah, so maybe you've grown up in the church and you're like, I'm doing everything right and I'm still missing the point or this doesn't feel like I'm getting anything out of this. So we want to talk about that. I think... From our own stories, I know what that's like because I lived a very lukewarm life, unfortunately, for about four or five years of my life from college to post-college until I met the Lord in California. And the problem of living a lukewarm life is that you don't reap the benefits fully of either one. Because when you're in that lukewarm life, maybe you're at the bars, you're doing whatever, you're making out the dude on the weekends, and then you go to church the next day you're living a double life. And so you're not really reaping the full benefits. It's like, if you're going to go, you might as well just go all in in one of them because otherwise like you're, you're doing each one half bootied, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And you're going to be kind of like, Oh, this is, you live in this tension. You look like a hypocrite too. Oh, for sure. But you live in this weird tension where you're like, I kind of want to do this, but I also kind of want to do this. And you're just constantly playing tug of war. So what would you say to the person that's like in that right now? 
I would say that I do commend a lukewarm Christian on you have a desire to um, follow the Lord, Lord, the Lord's will. And so whether if you're out and like, you know, you're at the bar scene or even just like you're, you're going through the motions and you don't, you're not intentional with your faith at all. Uh, I do commend you and say that there is grace and say that there is, you have, there's something there to work with and God can, God can use the size, you know, of a mustard seed to, yep. you know, expand your faith and to uh, achieve the things that you need to achieve and, and walk in the way you need to walk. Um, and so I would first say that I would say the second thing, um, if you are off the deep end, you know, and you know what you're supposed to do, you're here, you're listening to the podcast uh, because you've fallen away from the Lord's will. Um, your family thinks you're Christian because you can talk the talk. You can walk the walk. Yep. You know the verbiage. You went to Sunday school because that was me. That was my story in a lot of ways. I could talk the talk, but I knew deep down, I was like, you know, this is kind of dumb. This is kind of mm -hmm. ridiculous. Uh, and I was tired of the Christianese. I was, I was tired of going to church mm -hmm. and, you know, everyone just seems to have it together. And so I would say the first step is giving yourself grace, removing your glasses of how you perceive other people's walk with the Lord and get to the root of what is, what internally are the things that I need to work on in my life? Mm -hmm. And do I actually believe Jesus is the son of God? Yeah. Because if you actually believe it, then you, it's supposed to be, your faith is supposed to be a reaction to what you believe. Yeah. That's and good. so like, that's, that's the beginning is, do I actually believe in Jesus, the son of God? Because if you don't actually believe that it's going to be hard no matter what. Totally. That's such a good point, baby. Um, I love that because you're absolutely right. We, as believers, we respond and react because we truly wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is real in my life. Like if I thought Jesus was some figure in the sky, I would act as such. And so if you wholeheartedly believe God is who he says he is, and Jesus is the son of God, and you believe that he died on the cross for your sins, that that was for you, then you're going to live as such. However, even though you might believe that you may not live it out like that because you still want to have your fun. You still are like, eh, I'll, I'll get to that when I want to get to that. Like I'll follow God when it's convenient for me or when I feel like it. But I promise you, like I've seen this in my own life. What you are doing is kind of creating a life of regret or you're creating, you're pushing back the inevitable because at some point you're going to have to face these realities. You're going to have to face these decisions of knowing that one day, all of us are going to pass away and we're all going to stand before God and we're all going to have to take account for our actions. And so I would rather you do that now when you're on earth and say, you know what? I know I'm going to face God. So let me no longer delay these decisions and let me get right with God now. And here's the beautiful thing about Jesus and the gospel is you could start over. You can start today. You can start now. You don't have to look at your past and see a line of all the mistakes and the decisions you've made. And that holds you back from Christ. No, God says, okay, it's wiped. It's clean as snow. You can start over today. But the thing is, you've got to be responsible for it. You've got to take accountability and take action for yourself. I had a, um, that was good, babe. I had a buddy of mine tell me once I was kind of going through, this was a few years back. And he looked at me and told me that, hey, I don't think you fear God because I was in this like kind of pattern and, you know, I would tell him, yeah, I believe in him. And, and he was like, well, you don't fear him because it's one thing to believe in him, but it's another thing to fear him. And I don't see, I'm not saying do right because we're not, I don't think we're supposed to be afraid of God, but we have to realize there are consequences for our decisions. Yeah. And Every time in my life that I went off and I did something that I knew I shouldn't have done, it always bit me in the butt. Mm -hmm. And I think it, you have to really be honest with yourself, whether you're, I think there's like three different boats. I think there's a boat of people who fear him so much to where they're goody two shoes and they, but they don't have a relationship. It's all workspace. And then they judge yeah. other people. And then there's another boat of like lukewarm people. They believe in him, but they believe he's too good. So they don't fear him. The gospel of like, come as you, like, you are good. God You're loves loved you no matter you what. So it's like, I can go do what I want on the weekends and then I'm good. But you don't Get actually right fear Sunday. him. You believe in him. I truly believe that a lot of lukewarm Christians believe in him. It's the why the scripture is like, hey, I didn't know you. You know, even though you worship my name, even though. Oh, yeah, you proclaimed all these things in my yeah. name, but I never knew you. Yeah. yeah. 
And I think that there's a third boat of people who literally believe that this is all bull crap. Mm-hmm. And they actually struggle with faith. Yeah. And so I think, I think those are the three people on the boat. I think that's really awesome. I think that's a good summary. And I think no matter which one you are in, what we can say from our own testimonies is exactly what my lovely husband said was we've strayed off the path. I strayed off the path. And let me tell you, sin has consequences. Sin has lingering consequences. Sin is not that it's, it can't be redeemed because God is a redeemer. It's not that he can't repair and restore and redeem all the things that are broken or the decisions that you've made. But that is the reality of sin. I think people want to be like, no, I'm young. I'm in my 20s, whatever. I'm in college. Everyone's doing it. And then next thing you know, you you five years down the later, five years down the road later, you're like, how did I get here? I have a broken heart now. I have endless relationships that are just failing. Maybe you've made some really bad decisions. You had to drop out of school. I don't know what that is. But I just promise you and I want you to believe that the way that God laid out for us is better. I have tasted and I've seen what the world has offered and it was not good. And it always promised things to me that never fully satisfied me or delivered. And so walking in God's ways, the more that you fall in love with Jesus, like don't focus on like, I need to clean up my sin. I need to do this all on my own. No, you focus on Jesus and that's how you get right. The closer you get to Jesus, the further away you get from sin. And he is the reason why we find solutions. He's the reason why we find freedom. It's not just let me do this all on my own. Let me just read more, go to church more. Like those are all beneficial supplementary things, but the main source of freedom and true light in our life is Jesus. So focus on him, call upon him, pray to him, journal to him, read about him, and he is where you will find hope in a solution. Wow. You have to, um, it, within that. I have to pee really badly. There has, you can go pee, I can keep talking. Okay, I'll be right back. Y'all, I'm so sorry. I drank and I need to pee. We're, we're going to sit here while she's peeing and I'm going to play a, a video from Craig Rochelle I was listening to Craig Rochelle this week and this spoke to me. And I think no matter what season you're in, if you're the perfect Christian or if you're the lukewarm or if you're the person who just doesn't feel him for a while, I think that listening to this and applying this message, I think could be really beneficial. At some point you want to be just silent before him in solitude. And when you're quiet, just let your soul talk honestly to God. And you'd be surprised at what your soul wants to say to God. Don't force it. Just let your soul talk to him. Cry out to him. Maybe even shout at him. And it may take time, but if you spend time in his presence, your soul will say what it's been desperate to say. Your soul may say, I am afraid, I'm hurting, I feel alone. Your soul may say, God, I'm crying out to you, but I don't even know where you are. Let your soul cry out to him. Your soul may say, I'm sorry, God, I've neglected you, I've neglected my first love. You may say, God, I'm ashamed of what I've done. I'm ashamed that I haven't prioritized you. I'm ashamed that I've got caught up in sin. I'm I'm ashamed that I've fallen back in love with this world and stopped loving your kingdom. And it's some of your your soul might say, I'm mad at you, God. I asked you to do it and you didn't. You're mad. God can handle your anger. I promise you, he'd he'd rather you run to him mad than run away from him. Cry out to him, cry out to him. I'm so sad you missed that. <clears throat> I literally started like tearing up listening to that. When we when we edit it later, you should definitely listen. Um. So yeah, that. Gosh, that did so much to me because guys, even now, I still struggle with. I've been a Christian for so long, and I've done this. I've, I since I was five, I've been in the church, and you just get so used to the verbiages. You get so used to just going through life. And it's the same relationship. Mm-hmm. And it's like, man, I've even looked at the last couple of months of my own life. And I'm like, man, I'm neglecting really my first love. And, yeah. he, and Craig said it. 
He'd rather you run to him mad than run away from him. Mm. And the enemy is what he's going to do. If he can't get you to run away from God, he's going to get you to live such a lukewarm life to where that's good enough for him. Or where you're just inevitably going to walk away anyway because you're like, if you're not really basking in truly God's presence or who God says you are and you're not fully believing it, eventually you're going to fade away. Because uh-huh. if you're not walking towards God daily, you're slowly but surely sliding back away from him. And so that lukewarmness is going to cause you to be like, I don't hear from God. God doesn't care about me. Nothing good's happening for me. Why is everyone else getting this? What is this all for? I'm out. And so I know that it's a difficult journey, but I truly believe like it's more about those faith. It's more about faith than it is about actions. Like we are big in, especially me, I'm so big into reading the word of God daily and sometimes I miss, but that I don't view that as like, oh man, I'm a bad Christian. God hates me now. I missed a day. Like I know that I am in right standing with God still because I still try to honor him online, offline, in private, in public, all the things. And I just have a relationship with him. I know that like, even if I take a day apart, like me and him are good, but I never want to let that be a mindset to where I become complacent because I'm like, now we're good fam. No, like I just, if I'm going to build a relationship with my husband, we have to talk, we have to hang out. We have to know each other. We have to ask each other questions. Yeah. And oh my gosh, he, I just imagine someone sitting there and you're at church and the sermon or whatever is all about the things you need to do. And you're not even in a place where you don't even have like a sincere, honest, like, just like a relationship with him. Mm-hmm. And that before, that's why you're saved through faith and grace alone. And if you sit down and go, man, Jesus, I'm going to get right with, like, he wants you, you, he wants you to be in a great standing with him from a relationship before you go out there and, and work for him, because you're not going to be able to work for God enough to earn his, his love. And all he really wants is your time and it just sp- I, your heart yeah yeah and so i feel like i've even struggled with this where i'll sit in church and i'll go man i'm not serving enough i'm not i'm not doing this enough and the lord's just like caleb i just want your heart you know yeah i think it's a reminder for us just to have an honest conversation with ourselves like i have to do this a lot where i'm like i get too busy into the works thing where i'm like i've read my bible today i'm good And God's like, you have not even prayed to me. You haven't even talked to me in weeks. And I'm like, oh, shoot. And so it is easy to kind of replace the Bible or those good actions with just a heart posture or a heart that's on fire for the Lord. Like ultimately, the more that you just sit with him, you talk to him, you hang out with him, like the more you're going to know him, the more you're going to hear him, the more he's going to entrust you and speak to you. And I don't know. I was thinking about this because I did um, a makeup and ministry video about this on my Instagram. And a lot of people are like, oh man, God doesn't speak to me anymore nowadays. Like he speaks to so-and-so or why doesn't God speak to us the way that he does in the Bible? Or I wish I could just hear God's voice. Like I wish he could just tell me where to go and what to do. And then I would do it. And I remember pastor John, Jonathan Pacluda saying, why would God show you his unrevealed plan? If you don't even follow his revealed plan which means if we're not already obeying and abiding and knowing and following the things that he's told us to do in the Bible, why would he entrust you with more? Because you're not even already following that. And this isn't to condemn you or shame you, but it's to start asking God, the Holy Spirit. Jesus is called the helper in in John all the time and all the whole Old New Testament because he is a helper by him. That's how we get the power to overcome sin, struggles, thoughts, repetitive behaviors that we keep going back to. Um, and we are able to follow those things in the Bible. When Jesus says, love your enemies, pray for your enemies, um, you know, give money, have a heart that is servant hearted. Um, what else did Jesus tell us to do? Deny our flesh, pick up our cross <laughs> daily. Yeah. Like things that we know aren't good for us. We overcome those. The more we focus on Jesus, we say, Holy Spirit, will you help me? We've both been through things where we were addicted. We've had things in our past where literally the Holy Spirit took things from us. Uh, it, it starts with telling the truth. Yes. It stops with, it starts with, you know, whatever, like God says, things will come to light. Whatever is hidden will come to light and the truth will set you free. And so whatever you're struggling with, I don't care if you're married. I don't care if you're dating. I don't care if you're, you're single, whatever you're hiding from 
people or you're living a lie, like expose it. You know, for me, I, I haven't been a perfect husband. I, I've spoken in ways that I shouldn't speak. I haven't, you know, done my part or I've forgotten to this and, and I'm not doing the things as a husband. I haven't displayed, you know, the fruits of the spirit. And I call, I, I get on the phone call with my buddies and I own it and I open up and I say, hey, I'm struggling here. I don't believe God is good in this area. I don't believe that he really sees the desires of my heart. I, I don't believe that I, I, I'm smart enough to accomplish this. And you sit there, and this goes into our next segment, with, with friendships. Mm-hmm. You need to have people in your life who are not only checking in on you, but allow, but they allow for a space for you to be able to come to them, and you can expose your life because you know no matter what, they love you. And no matter what, there's no judgment and they truly want the best thing for you. And that is to be a believer in Christ and to live out your mission. And so I would ask you, does your friend group allow for that place? Yeah. You know, that's so, so vital. I mean, in this journey, you, you really cannot do it alone. And the enemy wants you to do it alone. The enemy wants to tell you just you, I don't need anybody. It's like that song. I love me. I love myself and I don't need anybody else. That's a lie. I'm sorry. You need some people and you don't need just yourself because yourself is flawed. Yourself is a sinner. And by the grace of God, we can go from sinner to saints. But we need people. Like I will not be my 100% capacity without my husband, without Maddie, without Riley, without Alyssa. Like there's been so many things I've told Maddie that like, Hey, I'm struggling with blank. Like I told her at the beginning of this year, I want to pray more. And she said, okay, we'll break that down for me. What does that look like? You can't just say, I want to pray more. She's like, what does that look like? I said, okay, you know what? I want to pray every single day audibly out loud. She asked me yesterday, how's that been going? How's been prayer for you? Have you been praying more? And I'm like, dang, Having somebody hold you accountable, call you out and challenge you, that's how you're going to grow. But it's painful sometimes when you're like, oh, frick, like I didn't do it. But that's, we all need those people. Yeah. And having friends in your life who, um, dang, I had such a a thing I was going to say. That like aren't pressed by you and. Okay. Yeah. So, or if you came to your friends and you're like, hey man, I'm not drinking anymore. Hey man, I'm trying to better my life. And they're like, oh you're boring now, or you're yeah. judging us, or you, uh, you've you changed. Or, ha, that's funny, that's not going to last. Yeah, or like, yeah. They, they crap on your party, and they... They, uh, they just don't make believe you feel, in you. Or they make you feel stupid. Oh, you believe in that? You believe in that prosperity church? Oh, you believe in mm-hmm. that, you know, cult? And it's like, you got to really remove those people in your life. I, I heard a quote the other day, it was like, you're not going to be successful unless you remove people in your life. And Mm. I think that that, it it sounds harsh, but if you actually took account to like, what people in my life, truly, I could come to them and, uh, because I could look at every guy in my life and I can go, Mm -hmm. oh my gosh, every guy in my life I could go to and I go, hey man, I'm not drinking for the rest of the year. Mm. And they would all go, dude, that's awesome. Yeah. All my friends. I don't think I have one friend that would not encourage me to live in my best life. They yeah. might ask some questions, um, but at the same time, you need you need to have those people. And if you don't have those people, it's better to be alone. It's better to be alone for a season, but I don't think you should stay there. I think the whole goal of the body of Christ, which is us, we are the body of Christ. The church is the body of Christ, is to connect believers because this it is literally 20 times harder to do this on our own. However, it's not impossible there's missionaries, there's people in the Bible that have did this alone, but I don't think we're meant to stay there. And so I think for a season, you've probably maybe got to weed through some people and we want to do an episode on friendship. Maybe weed through those people that you know aren't bringing you closer, they're bringing you back or bringing you further away and remove yourself a little bit. Because I think, like Caleb is saying, like those people are going, it's even the small remarks, the slight things of, are you sure you want to do that? Or oh, yeah, right, or good luck with that, or we'll see if it lasts. Things like that, they put this like little seed of doubt and a lie in your head where you're like, man, I can't do this. And you can, you know? And so I just want to encourage you that the body of Christ is meant to connect believers, to encourage each other and pray for that. God knows the desires of your hearts and he wants you to have like-minded people around you that are going to spur you on. Yeah. Or uh, you, let's say you want to change. Let's say your reputation and your friend group or who you are you don't really like it. When you leave, you're like, man, I, I don't like who 
I am or who people think I am to be. That's why it's sometimes refreshing if you've ever moved to a different city or state. You're like blank slate. I get to come in here Mm -hmm. and be who I want to be and allow yourself to change. Allow yourself to go, you know what? I'm not going to act that way anymore. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm going to be the guy that, you know, and it's going to take some time to like, change because reputation if you have a reputation for something it sticks for a long time yeah and so if you want to change your reputation sorry you know, do it i'm moving around i'm like really uncomfortable <laughs> sorry about that so but I, I did want to go back to really fast what caleb was saying about opening your mouth and exposing it because ultimately that's how you're going to find freedom we do not find freedom with secrecy and the power of sin is in secrecy. So when you open your mouth and you confess and you say, you know what? I, I can't believe I'm opening my mouth about this. I cannot believe I'm telling somebody and you think they're going to judge you. They think that they're going to condemn you. You think they're going to be like, I cannot believe you, but I promise you, they just want to help you and they want to set you free too. And the way you're going to find freedom is in confession. And James 5, 16 literally says this. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another because the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So don't confess to the person that is either going to encourage it or is going to keep you there or going to be like, dude, it's not that big of a deal. Like I'm doing the same thing. You want to confess to the person that it's hard to confess to, the person that's going to encourage you, that's going to challenge you, that's going to hold you accountable and say, you know what? Let's link arms. I got you. We're going to get through this together and I'm going to help you not go back. And the Bible says in Proverbs, I think it's Proverbs 20, like a dog to his vomit is so one person that returns to their sin. Mm-hmm. I don't think that was the verse. <laughs> Let me look that up. It's close enough. I think people get it. But you guys get the point. Like, you don't want to be the, with those people that are encouraging you to return back to your sin and the things that keep enslaving you like a dog to its vomit. Can you look it up, please? Oh, wait, I got it. Let me just say it really fast. <laughs> Proverbs 26, 11, as a dog returns to its vomit, so fools repeat their folly. So let's not be little doggies. What's what's folly in your life right now? What do you keep running back to? Mm, I think negativity. I was going to say comparison. Uh, comparison bit. negativity yeah. because at the be- literally at the beginning i'm like literally, literally at the beginning of this year we were all like sat around a fire we're like what do we want to change in our life and i think i said negativity and i'd probably even say comparison i think for me i think it's self-doubt i uh yeah i feel like for me i i go through this like these phases where i believe i can do anything and then just these crippling moments of anxiety that lasts for about a week Aww. where I'm like, man, I'm not good enough. I'm not, I'm not smart enough. Uh, you ever see someone's like, so for instance, um, I think I've talked about this before, but I'm, I'm back in school. I'm finishing my undergraduate and I'm writing these papers and it, sometimes it's so difficult. And in a lot of these papers I'm writing, it'll have like a sample of like what the paper should look like. And I'm reading this paper and I'm like, man, this guy is way smarter than me. And this is a sample of another student that's done this work before. And I'm like, I'm never going to be that intelligent to be able to communicate in that way. And so I'll just quit for Mm. two days. I didn't do school because I'm like, I'm not smart enough. And it just, I'm like, well, of course I'm not going to get smart enough now because I quit. Yeah. And it really takes time. Just like in your faith, just like in anything in life, mm-hmm. things take time. You're not going to wake up tomorrow and be freaking a theologian where you can quote scripture and you can just prof- prophesy prophesy over certain things or speak in tongues, like all these things. No, like start small. Start with some prayer. Get in his get in get in his presence, and from there, the fruits of the spirit will start to come forward out of your mouth, out of the way you live. And through that, as a result, I think you'll see some beautiful things in your life. I agree with that. Yeah, it's so easy to compare your beginning stages of your faith with someone that's done it for so long, like a pastor or a Christian influencer. And I just want it to be a reminder for y'all that like my own journey took me like three plus years. And I it started with me literally having someone call me out 
me confessing and then being like, you know what? I want to understand who God is for myself. And so I sat and I read the Bible for hours. I thank the Lord that we had more time to slow down during the pandemic because I grew my relationship with God so much in that time because we weren't, we were at home. So I would sit and read and read and read and I would just sit in God's presence and worship. And I mean, it was a time that I loved so much where I grew so much because every single day, it's like, you're just growing that 1% every single day, 1%, 1%, 1%. And next thing you know, you look back and it's, it's this massive growth throughout the entire year. So what is that 1% for you? Maybe that's a verse a day, a chapter a day, whatever, a podcast. But I just, I'm always going to be bent on reading the word of God, because that is where we know God's voice. That's where we know what he wants us to do, what his voice sounds like, his character, and the ways that we can emulate Jesus, because we all want to emulate Jesus, but we can't emulate him if we don't know what he did. So I, I'd encourage yeah. you to read John or read Luke or Proverbs. I heard someone say, oh, you want to hear God speak? <laughs> read his word. That's his yeah. voice. That's, That's the true. things he said. Um, but also I would say that just as equally important that you need to, for me, it's the gym. I get to the gym, I put my worship music on and I can, or I go into the sauna and I just sit and I'm like, Lord, what do you want out of me in this life? Because ultimately what he wants out of you in your life is to lead people to Jesus through the things that you are doing in your life. Yeah. Like you can go in and share the gospel with somebody but you can also do something that's so amazing with your life. I'm not preaching a performance hustle, but I'm saying that like, if you're a doctor, go be the greatest doctor. Yeah, bless and, your patients. And, and, and where people are like, there is something different about you and the way you you take care of your patients and the way that you, you know, you fill everything out, right? You do the charts perfectly and you, and you check on the nurses and, and you care about, mm -hmm. you know, the technicians and you care about, you know, the, the people on the low totem pole and you, you're not mean to the rookies or you're a, you're in sales or you're a i don't know a, a nurse or you're a contractor or you're a stay-at-home mom be excellent excellent but do it in a way where other people can go man there there really is something different about them totally. and i'm guilty of that mm -hmm. like i will find myself driving and someone cut me off and i want to flip them off or a wait waitress is being rude and i'm like ready to snap back and i'm like mm -hmm. First of all, you know, I need to be careful because he, he doesn't do that. You, but it's no, like my, my point is, is like we need to like realize that people are watching. And in the same breath that you can share the gospel to somebody, you can share the gospel to somebody very effectively in the way you treat people and the way you also live yeah. out your calling. Totally. And, and I think the more so it's just embodying the fruit of the spirit, which is what we talked about in our sermon yesterday. Church was about the fruit of the spirit because the fruit of the spirit are the ways that people are going to know that's a believer. There's something different. She's gentle. She's kind. She's patient. She's loving. She's, um, what are the other ones? She has self-control. Yeah. Like she said something in the sermon yesterday. Like, like what if you had so much self-control that someone was like, how do you do that? How did you not have sex before marriage? How did you not drink? How did you whatever? And it's like, by the grace of God. But the more that I followed Jesus, the easier this all became. Became, And it's true. So fruit of the spirit is a sure sign to other people that you are a disciple of Jesus. Okay, so let's just get back to the basics. So I know that this conversation can be hard because, again, it's easy to compare your faith journey with someone else's, but you've just got to know that Jesus wants a personal relationship with you. And I know sometimes like we can go to the Bible studies and the groups and the devotionals and we can get all the supplementary things that are really beneficial. But the bottom line is like, it starts with you and you being honest with yourself of like, okay, you know what? I'm not where I want to be. And I want to know Jesus more. And so like, obviously I'm so thankful for this platform because we get to provide resources and give you guys tips and everything. But ultimately, it's just got to start with you. Just being honest to yourself and figuring out, okay, what are those three boats? Which boat am I in that Caleb listed? And it's okay if you're in any of those, to be honest. But it starts with being honest and maybe asking someone for help. Like, I'm struggling. I need help. I, I don't want to do this. Maybe ask someone to mentor you, someone at your church, someone older, someone wiser that's been there, that's done that. Can you help me? Can you pour into me? Can you disciple me, discern, discern things that are good and bad in my life? And I just think linking arms with other believers is going to be super beneficial. And 
again, reading the word of God to be able to say, okay, if I am where I am right now and I'm trying to figure out where I'm trying to go, reading again, John, seeing the way that Jesus treated people, the way he lived out his life, the way that he didn't care what people thought about him, the way that he blessed people. How can we be more like that? Yeah. Also, that's good. I would say, let's move on to our last segment. And that, I want to talk about, have fun. Like, this is, this life is so short. You get one life, you get one, you know, spouse, hopefully. You get one mom, you get one dad, you get one or two or three cousins. You you don't have very many things in your life that are going to be permanent. You don't have all these all these things in your life that are surrounding you and you're always like, "Man, I, I'm not doing this enough. I'm not I'm not doing this enough. I'm not succeeding in the way that I want to succeed." Take a breath and meet God where he wants you to meet him at, and that is literally where you are right now. Where you are right now. Yeah. And enjoy it. Enjoy the ride. Like let's just as as a society here take off the pressure of performance because that's not what God wants for us and put the pressure on our shoulders of really only one expectation he has for us is, or two is to love God with all of our heart, heart, soul, and mind and love people. Yep. And that's really it. That's it. And the rest will flow from that. When you boil it down to what does God ask us to do? Because I mean, you can open the Bible and see a list of things. He literally says, that in these two commandments fulfills every single law and it's love God and love people. And I know it sounds really cliche. Like people are like, Oh, I'm gonna put that on my merch, but it's true because the more you love God and you love him out of that love, that will flow into everything else that you do. So your focus should not be today. Okay. Let me worship, listen, more worship music, journal more, do all the, I love all these things. Mm -hmm. But the number one goal is let me, God, how can I love you more today? How can I fear you more today? How can I honor you today? How can I be righteous in your eyes and have you as my audience of one? Because if we're living for the approval of all these other people, all the Instagram, all the whatever, you're missing the main point. And the main point is that God wants to know you. God loves you. God wants you to seek him with all your heart. And when you seek him, you will find him. And it, that's a promise. It may not be right away, right? Not may not be instantly, but it's a promise. And so let that be your focus is God, how can I love you more today? And then out of that, that will flow into trickle into other things. And I think another thing that we need to remember is that Caleb touched upon this earlier when he was talking about all the self doubt of, I don't think I'm smart enough. I don't think I'm this. I don't think I'm that you've got to know that you're in a battle. You're in a fight for your life and for your soul every single day light versus darkness, God versus Satan. And I know it sounds like a Harry Potter movie, but it's because it's true that there is a fight for your soul and there's an enemy that wants to take you down. He wants to lie. He wants to steal, kill, destroy your family, your future, your hopes, your dreams, your finances, your career, anything you touch, he wants to destroy Mm -hmm. anything to take you out, to take you down. He's going to go for it. So you've got to be prayed up. You've got to be armored up. You've got to anoint your house, your head, your home, your friends, all these people around you because the enemy is coming and he's tactful. And so if you're not prayed up and you're not believing that God and and Jesus's name, there's the power to fight back. You're susceptible for weakness and for the enemy to attack you. Mm -hmm. And so it's so important to know that he comes in the form of a lie. He twists everything. He is called the deceiver. He's called the father of lies for a reason because that's what he does. And so he'll say things to you and you're like, oh man, I am the worst. I suck. I'm not smart enough. I can't finish school. Why would anyone listen to my platform? Is anyone going to buy my book? Does anyone care? I'm a worthless piece of crap. You fill in the blank what that is for you. And you've got to run that by somebody. I believe blank about myself. Is this true? And I can guarantee you they're going to say no Mm -hmm. and know that, that God he wants to help you in these lies. He wants to give you the truth because he, he is truth. His name is truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so to find truth, you find that in Jesus to replace those lies the enemy is spewing at you. Yeah. Don't, don't overcomplicate it either. Um, we're saying a lot of things. You know, when I first started working out, um, I was so obsessed. I'm like, how to get the six pack, how to get the chest, how to get the back. Mm-hmm. And I watch all these YouTube videos. But the exercises were so complicated. 
and they were like twisting this way to get the muscle to go up. And I was like, I have to do all these weird things in order to become the version of myself that I wanted to become. When in reality, all I needed to do was squat, bench press, a shoulder press, maybe a bicep curl, four things. And it's very simple. Yeah. I don't need to contort my body in a way that makes sure it hits. It's like, no. So what that was doing was I wasn't going to work. I wasn't going to work out because it was too complicated. I was like, gosh, I don't really know how to really do this in the right way to get the maximum results. We do the same thing within our faith. It's like, I don't really know how to like be close with God. And I don't really know. Yeah. Caleb and Janine, you're saying a lot of things, but I don't really, really know how. And it's like, just love God, love people get in his presence, read his word. And, and from that, that's where I think you'll be able to see all the results that you need to see. I agree. Okay. And if you maybe have those down pretty well, then you can work on more devotionals and community and like serving at your church, all that type of stuff, because yeah. everyone has, has a different uh, spectrum. There are, they are on with their faith. Um, and I pray that bless you guys, honestly, like let us know if you have more questions or let us know if this blessed you in the comments down below. That's really the goal is to how, help you guys. How do you think they, um, people listening to this, cause temptation is a real thing. Mm -hmm. You know, all this sounds good until that temptation moment comes. Yeah. How do we overcome that? Cause I mean, I'm married now as a single man before there were it was a daily battle. There was daily temptations out there. Temptation sucks. It does, and yes. I get it. Sin is fun. It like, is. Until sin, it's not. So Craig Rochelle also says, like, you know, people say, you know, sin's not fun. It's like, oh, you're probably not doing it right. Mm. That's what Craig used to always say. And it is kind of true. Just, just because you stop sinning and you live in God's way doesn't mean it's necessarily, like, more fun. Right. I think it's more fulfilling. I think it's more fulfilling and less regretful. And you don't wake up with the hangovers, the moral hangovers, the bad decisions. I think sin can be fun. Don't get me wrong. Otherwise, we wouldn't do it. You know, there, there's no way. If it wasn't fun and, and enjoying, uh, enjoying, is that the word? Yeah. If we didn't enjoy it, so, we wouldn't do it. How, so how do we overcome but, it? I heard a, a podcast and it was like, you're not going to be able to really overcome something or create a new habit until you do it a hundred times in a row. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, for me, it's like my vitamins in 2024. Yeah. I've done it every single day for the last 29 days and it's becoming a habit. But I, and I think sin is kind of the same way. Yeah. You really have to like go through a period of like, this sucks, you know? <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, it's, a, it's kind of what I was saying in the beginning of confessing is step one and then number two is bringing in someone. Number three is having them pray for you. Number four is accountability, having them check up on you. And number five, just keep doing it. Because the more that you just keep trying, the easier it's going to hopefully get. And like I said, the more you focus on Jesus, he, he has the power to break things off of you overnight. Mm -hmm. He's done that for me. But if that's not necessarily your journey, just keep doing it. Because I know those little temptations come back. Like, and if you lose another temptation, a new one comes, mm -hmm. which is so crazy because the enemy is like, all right, he's, he's done with that. So let's get him, give him a new one. Um, and so it's just having those people around you and being open and honest of like, I struggled or I went back to it or I messed up again. Can you help me? Because the thing is like, the more that you keep it in the darkness, the more power it's going to have over you. The more you expose it, the easier it's going to be and the more freedom you're going to get. It always sucked when I was, you know, you'd be like two months in without, you know, texting that, that girl or that guy or, or clicking on that website or yeah, like not drinking. And then, and then you, and then you have a night and then you mess up mm -hmm. and then it feels like all your, you, all you've been striving for is gone and, and, you know, God sees you in a bad way. Yeah. And I think overcoming where when you fail immediately, like accepting the grace and accepting that, okay, there might be consequences for this, but I'm not going to stand in shame. I'm not going to stand in, because the enemy, when you mess up, he's he's going to go after you. Isn't it so funny how like the enemy works? He's like, just do this. It's, it's really not that bad. Just text her. Or just go just out with try. him and sleep with that person one more time and, and go get drunk tonight. And then the minute you do it, he's like, how dare you? Right. You're not a good enough Christian. You, you'll never amount to what God wants for you. Yeah. And it's the same way in marriage. He tries to, pull you together, you know, before marriage and then pull you apart when you get married. And so he's crafty. 
and yeah. understanding his his strategies. Tactics. Yeah, yeah, that's so good. It, it's so true. He makes it seem like it's literally no big deal before you do it, and then once you do it, it's the worst deal ever. So he minimizes before and he maximizes afterwards. It's pretty messed up. So just remember that. Yeah. That was a great point, babe. To wrap. I love doing podcasts with you. I love you. doing podcasts with you. I love you. <laughs> guys, she's weird. You Y'all know, don't even know. Guys, I don't think you realize how weird my I'm wife is. Weirdo. She, um, you know, she's sometimes, sometimes can come across as pretty serious. You think? You know, at times. And this is the goofiest human. I mean, she's always just like goofing around i like stay talking in a baby voice i'm so sorry it's okay he loves it well i don't love it. i don't love a baby voice on camera but like yeah when we're just like no one hears i'm like oh it's kind of no you literally are like why are you being the cutest thing ever yeah <laughs> um, anyway is there anything on life that we want to talk about before we go to reddit on reddit um next weekend i'm super excited i'm hosting a galentine's event with my followers so we're working out together i have some sponsors Tickets already sold out, which is crazy, but they sold out in 10 minutes. I'm like so excited for it. Yo, we need, we need a live, we need, we need a live podcast. We have I to do know. it. No, you guys have talked about it. Yeah. I wonder like where, I think most of our listeners are from Dallas, but I think that they're kind of spread out. Yeah. So like drop a comment if you would come to a yes. live podcast. I, uh, we have some ideas in the next few months that we'd love to, you know, do a happy and healthy like weekend or, or something like yeah. that. Yeah. It'd be kind of cool. What if we did this? What if we did like a live pod on a like a a Saturday night, but that morning we did like a worship. Like a no like we did like oh. a meetup. We all did like a run. We all did like a lunch yeah. t- together and then we everyone drove to the live podcast after that. It was like a whole day. That'd be so It'd sick. It'd be kind of fun. That'd be so sick. Y'all we're we're planning this out. So we're trying to figure that out. Um, book stuff has been going really well. The book was super successful. It was a great launch. It hit top charts, which is exciting. And you guys target picked up my book in 600 stores, which I'm so thankful wow. for. Praise you, Jesus. And thank you to you guys for pre-ordering the amount of people that were like, I pre-ordered your book. You sent me screenshots. Thank you. Thank you. And, thank and you. And her book on how to date younger will be coming to stores <laughs> yeah. soon. You know, if you want to know how to be the best cougar in your community, hey. you know, she, Janine is just, she's your girl for that. Whoa, and whoa, whoa. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to write a book one day and it's, it's going to be how to, uh, yeah. how Date older women? No, I feel like I should do a book on like, I don't know, breaking a horse. Because you were kind of like a horse in a way. What the? And I had to break you down Let's a end bit. this podcast. <laughs> that was <laughs> The last thing. Some oh. things I'd like. I, I try to formulate sentences and I'm wing it as I go. I'm like, what? And sometimes they land, but I sometimes see, they don't. I see question marks you're over not my a head. Ho- you're not a horse. I was like, what? I wasn't I wasn't saying I needed to break you. I'm saying that you were kind of a stallion. A little stubborn. You were stubborn and I was just like. Because I was a single stallion when you met me. Yeah. Not Meg the stallion though. Mm-mm. The last thing really fast, you guys, is that I am working back on merch. So stay tuned. we got some designs coming. So stay tuned for that. Okay, let's move on to our next segment, which we love so much. Reddit on, on Reddit. Reddit. On Reddit. I love that sound That's effect. It's a cool sound. It's really fun. Okay, so for today's Reddit on Reddit, what do we have, baby? I got some tea. So it's kind of funny because this is like, we're just we just went from like, Talking about all this Christian <laughs> stuff, which is great. I lost it. Oh no, baby, you'd be messing. No, things when you up. open the app, it refreshed. That, refreshed. That gun it. So again, on Reddit, on Reddit, we find a crazy, juicy story, and we read this to you guys, and we react to this situation. So okay, here we go. The girl I was dating asked me to unfollow all female influencers. That's crazy, Janine. I, it was me. I wrote I, this. I wonder if you were I'm one of them. <laughs> um. I went on a first date with a girl and we had a great time. She even asked to hang out again and we followed each other on Instagram. The next day she texted me asking why I followed so many girls on Instagram. I guess she was referring to a bunch of gym influencers or just random TikTok girls I followed. She said it gave her the ick, rightfully so. (laughs) Classic. (laughs) And she asked me to unfollow them, unfollow them immediately. I agreed to unfollow a few. <laughs> That's just <funny>. a few. <laughs> I agreed to follow just unfollow just a few. But a few hours later, I found she unfollowed and blocked me. Whoa. Wow. 
I kind of feel bad because we had such a great time and I really liked her. Uh, is it really a big turnoff if I'm following a bunch of a uh, bunch of such accounts? I don't know if I'm in the wrong here, but I'm really curious. Hmm. All right. So, what do you think of that Reddit on Reddit? Very juicy. Okay. First of all, I see why this girl feels this way, but I also think a little crazy to tell him to unfollow girls after a first date. Yeah. Like you don't have that equity, but I respect her. Because she saw the signs and she dipped. Yeah. Instead of being like, no, maybe he's like, honestly, I kind of respect that. At first, I thought it was a little weird that she blocked him like that fast. But also, I think it kind of shows the condition of his heart a little bit. If he's wanting to follow all those things. And maybe, no, actually, I don't even want to justify it. I was like, maybe he's trying to get gym advice. No, no, I don't want to justify that. <laughs> so I think I understand why she did that, I kind of commend her for just being like, you know what, I see the signs, I'm dipping. But I also think it's a little crazy I, to ask him on date one. I think her approach could have been better. I think it could have been maybe on a phone call or second date. like hey, or explaining I, why. Hey, I noticed you follow a bunch of accounts that I think are you know inappropriate. Uh, can you explain to me why you follow these people? Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe he followed those people three years ago and when he was in a bad place. Or when he d wasn't walking the way he was supposed to well, walk. And then he just never thought about it to unfollow later. Well, I really doubt that. Probably not, but my... Because my, I think he explained it, right? Yeah, hang on. My point is, on the Reddit, I think it's cool that he asked the question. Because he actually is... He doesn't really think he's doing anything wrong. Right. Uh, so I respect that. But from a guy's perspective, or from what I think... I think she made the right decision because... If the man you're dating follows a bunch of those accounts, I think there's probably some lust issues there. Mm -hmm. um, and you also shouldn't be competing with, you know, other women on Instagram right. and body comparison and all that stuff. Well, I also think why she did the right decision. I think people might think we're crazy because as a Christian and when you're looking for like a godly man, you don't want to have to tell him to do these things. Like you want to find someone that's already done these things. That's already doing this thing. That's already going through a long period of like, Hey, I really want to have purity. I want to, you know, being careful what I'm watching. Like, that's why I liked you because you had already, you know, dealt with this stuff in your past. So to have to go and tell him, like, I don't want to tell a dude I'm dating. Like, can you unfollow these women? And it makes me look like the bad guy. It makes me look like I'm jealous or I'm comparing, compare, having comparison issues, which I just don't want to have to deal with a dude scrolling online, looking at girls' booty cheeks all day long. I just yeah. don't want to deal with that. And as a, if, if a, if a man is really walking in the way he should be walking, you know, he is, you know, maybe he followed these girls when they were in high, when he was in high school and the, you know, their social media route took a turn. And then now all of a sudden they're posting these, these things you know, for me, I got into a routine before I was even with you where I would unfollow these accounts or I would mute friends who were posting, you know, certain things because there's really no excuse. If he goes, well, the, it's a friend. It's like, well, mute them, you know, because mm -hmm. you shouldn't be putting yourself in a position to see things just like girls. Girls probably shouldn't be. If yeah. I we started dating and you followed all these gym accounts and these bros, I'd be like, ah, that's a little it's weird. It's a little weird. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think this situation is just interesting because, like, this is a common debate of can the girl ask the guy to unfollow girls? And I think, I think, but there is a double standard because girls, well, girls yes. follow wild, just really? dudes, dudes, dudes. Yes, I don't know of any girls that do that personally, but oh. I do think there's a double standard in it. A girl could post a guy and go, and he could like be his shirt off with his shirt off and go, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, this is my man crush. Oh. He's so beautiful. Yeah. This man, this man makes me melt. But if a man does it, he's like lustful, which I yeah. agree he is, but I, I agree. But like, there's a double standard. There's a little bit there's of a double standard. There's always a double standard. Yeah. I, Cause if he I did agree. this, if on the first date, this guy was like, yeah, you need to unfollow all these people. He would, he'd be you, controlling too. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. So, They'd be like, he's controlling. Yeah. Red flag. Yeah. That's a nick, you know? Yeah. I, I'm curious what you guys think about this decision. I think, uh, I think. Where did we land? Where, where did we land? Well, I, I think she, it's, she's fair for doing that. I hope that, I'm glad that he's also asking the question, like, am I crazy or do I need to clean anything up? Like, I like that he's being self-reflective and aware. Yeah. And. Her approach um, should have been better. I think her approach should have been better. I think she should have said, hey, this is why I don't want to go on another date with you. Here's my recommendation. If you're going to date anyone going forward. But again, to ask him to unfollow on date one is kind of crazy. 
for me, I wouldn't even say unfollow. I would just say, Hey, here's why I'm not continuing to date you, but you can do what you want. But here's some suggestion going forward. Yeah. Okay. So curious what you guys think in the comments below. That was our Reddit on on Reddit. Reddit. Hope you guys enjoyed that segment and we're going to close out now. So thank you guys for listening to today's episode. If it blessed you in any shape or form, please let us know. If it was all you ever wanted. You is know? it all you ever wanted? Let us know. For new listeners and you still don't know who, what all I ever wanted means, just ask a person in the comments and they will, <laughs> and they will answer for Honestly, you. Honestly, they're not even going to know how to answer because yeah. they don't even know it where it started. It doesn't make a ton of sense. We don't even know where it started. Yeah, it really But doesn't. it's still it's all, all we, we ever wanted. Yeah. It's really, yeah. It's really true. Thank you guys for listening. We love you guys. We'll see you next Tuesday for another episode of Happy and Healthy. If you enjoyed today's episode, let us know. Comment, repost, DM us. We check the DMs. We love y'all, and we'll see you guys again next week for another episode of Happy and Healthy. But until then, stay, stay happy and healthy. healthy. Bye, guys. See you guys.